Good morning, and uh, welcome to our Sunday message and deep dive at Church of the Revelation. Yeah, we're happy you could join us this morning, spend time with us as we, um, we walk through messages on reigning, reigning in Christ or reigning with Christ. And so um, let's open with a word of prayer and let's see what, the, uh, what God has for us this morning. Father, we thank you for your grace, we thank you for your mercy, we thank you for wisdom, for courage, for understanding. Father, the world has so much going on today, the church has so much going on today, and we just pray, God, that through it all, through it all, that we learn to, we learn to trust more in our Lord Jesus and we learn to trust more in you. And so this morning, dear God, as we come to you, for revelation, we pray our hearts to be open for your word. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So by now we should have come to the realization that as a believer, one who follows Jesus Christ, we live our lives according to the guidance of the Holy Spirit rather than from those who uh, you know, follow the principles of this world. We have to have a way of examining things received from God in such a way that we can live our lives according to the will of God. And so you can see why prayer is such an important factor in our relationship with God. Because without prayer, without a means of, without a, a, the practice of communicating with God for direction, we're flying blind because, you know, in, 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 in terms of which way to go in different situations, in different circumstances, we fly blind if we don't, if we haven't basically uh, transformed or, or converted our minds to be thinking, hey, um, I need to consult God in this particular situation. But you can see also why meditation is important, right? Setting up, you know, setting our lives on a different focus than we were used to. And meditation is, um, is important no matter what we do. When we were in the world, we meditated. We, we, um, you know, we, we brought things together under certain mindsets. And we, sometimes we spent a lot of time sitting and focusing and, and um, getting the right <coughs> tools that we need so that we can be efficient in the things that we do. And so we, we're, we know how to do that. And so it's no different, or probably we, we have to do it even more so in Christ because we know that, and by now we should know that God's ways are different than our ways. And, and, and God says as far as the East is from the West, so is his ways different than ours. So, so if we meditated when we were in the world and we were trying to learn, uh, people were trying to learn from other people and, and you couldn't really go outside of the scope of the things that God created. Well, so much more when we're in Christ because, you know, as Jesus says, God is spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And neither one of those things are commonplace. Neither spirit nor truth are commonplace. And so we need a different type of mindset. So we need a different mindset, a different, a different attitude towards, you know, how we approach doing things from day to day, right? Can't just... We can't just go about doing our lives without, without any connection to our home. So consider Colossians 3.1. Let's say, um, you know, we, we looked at some scriptures last week and uh, we focused a little bit about, you know, dying and, and, and actually, you know, the, just the, the truth that you have, that we have died. And so in Colossians 3.1, it continues, Paul continues, this is a common theme to our, you know, throughout the scriptures. In 3.1 he says, therefore if you have been raised with Christ, 
I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, <clears throat> to a new life, sharing in his resurrection from the dead, keep seeking the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So last week we looked at, uh, you know, just the kind of deep dive how the natural person differ from the person we now are in Christ. A natural person does not receive the things from God because they're spiritually discerned. And if we have been raised with Jesus, then we're not in the natural anymore. The new person that we are live our lives according to the new according to new patterns and according to new teachings. But it says we are to seek things above where Christ is. And the, 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 the position of Christ is important to the believer. Amen? He is seated at the right hand of God. You know, when Jesus rose from the dead, he created a new reality. And then and this resurrected Christ seated at the right hand of God brings in uh, a, a, a new age, a new reality. You know, the resurrected Christ created a position that was not was not operational before. He is called firstborn from the dead. That means there was none born from the dead before him. He is firstborn of many brethren, firstborn of, of many people. And, you know, there's a lot to do with that because um, firstborn from the dead, those who are alive in Christ are members of the body of Christ. Um, <clears throat> we talk a lot about that and you know uh, as the body of Christ and we do not belong to our own, we were bought with a price, we're not slaves to sin anymore, but the position that at the right hand of God is, is, is a position of um, it's a position that a new a new reality for all of God's creation. There's an here to the throne of God now. And to be raised with Christ means that we are sharing in this new reality. Our homeland has been changed. Subsequently, our identity has been changed. Our family has been changed. You know, when Jesus was here, they tried to link him to his earthly family. And, um, you know, in Matthew 12, 46 through 48, reads like this. While he was still talking to the crowds, it happened that his mother and brothers stood outside asking to speak to him. And someone said to him, look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside asking to speak to you. But Jesus replied to, to the one who told him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand towards his disciples and all his other followers and he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father who is in heaven by believing in me and following me is my brother and my sister and my mother. So Jesus was changing the family lines right he was he was uh, he was changing what family looked like family now consists of those who do the will of my father those who do the will of god now i imagine that this must have been maybe somewhat shocking to those who were hearing it right and they must have thought what disrespect that he would diss his own family this way <clears throat> And this reality may have uh, offended some, and, and in our lives, this reality, I'm pretty sure, can be offensive too to our families, to our friends. I mean, who is really family to us, right? Who is really family to you? How do we treat each other in this new reality where new family relations are developed around those who are seeking always to do God's will? If we have been raised with Christ, this is a new reality for us as well. 
And so we are to keep seeking the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Let's look further. Colossians uh, 2, Colossians 3, verses 2 through 4. It says, <clears throat> set your minds and keep focusing habitually, there's that word again, on the things above, the heavenly things, not on things that are on earth, which are only temporary, they all have only temporal value. For you die to this world, and your new life is, is uh, your new real life is hidden with God, with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our life, appears, <clears throat> then you will appear with him in glory. So we are, again, to set our we're to focus on things above, not on things below. So we not only seek things above, we're also to set our minds on the things that we receive from above to form patterns of behavior. So what pattern do you seek to follow in your life? Where does it come from? Are we still using things from our earthly family, friends, culture to guide our lives? Or are we seeking God for what we call wisdom? Is our wisdom centered around things that have value in this life? Or things that will last for eternity? Now he says, set your mind on. It's not going to happen naturally. This has to be intentional. We have to align with God so that we can give Him an opportunity to show us the way. God has to show us the way. So when Jesus says He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life, He is the way. So if we want to know the way, then let's get to know Jesus. Amen? Because He is the way. And there are many things about Christ. Sometimes we only focus on the tip of the iceberg. But here again in Paul's letter to the Colossians, as it was to the Corinthians, believers are taught to develop habits that have their foundation on things not of this world, but based on our focus on things above. Verse 3 reveals again the truth about our, our new position in relation to the world when we became born again. We died to this world. The word translated have died means to become wholly alienated from a thing and freed from all connection with it. It's not, a, it's not a one foot in and one foot out. You know, one foot in the door, one foot out, one foot on one side of the fence and, the, and one foot on the other. That is not how death works, right? People who have died don't hang around waiting for the reality of it to fill the hearts of other people. We have to come to the realization that someone has passed on. Sometimes we get over it, sometimes we don't. But it doesn't wait for us. People who have passed on, I don't care if you keep the body around or whatever, it's not going to talk to you, it's not going to have any kind of communication. People who have passed on have passed on. And this is the way the Bible speaks of the person we were that have passed on. Use the same word. You have died and your lives are now, our lives are now hidden with God in Christ. Jesus demonstrated this for himself when he asked who, is, who his family was, who are my brothers, who are my sisters, and revealed that his family are those who do the will of our Father in heaven. And knowing that we died now <clears throat> does not mean that, you know, we know who we are in Christ completely. Our new lives are hidden with Christ in God, is what the scripture says. Our new lives are, are uh, you know, it is also subject to revelation from God. So the person who you claim to be, did God reveal to you that this is who you now are? Or are you, have you just claimed to be somebody without any spiritual guidance? Who we are in heaven 
is hidden with Christ in God. Our new identity is not hidden, is hidden from the world. Our new, so the world cannot claim to be the orchestrator of our new identity. The habits of the person in Christ demonstrate that we have developed a new sensitivity. Our senses are guided by, guided by things we receive from Jesus Christ, from his position at the right hand of God, not from the lower position of this world. When we set our sights on Jesus by faith, because this is obviously the only way we can do this, when we set our minds on things above, then Jesus becomes our life. And when Jesus is our life, then at his coming it will be evident that, you know, with him is where we have been dwelling. We can't find a new dwelling when Jesus comes. It becomes evident that this is where we've been living. And so we said before that, you know, when we believed, the battle for our hearts was won by God at the cross. God got past our defenses and penetrated our hearts for the sake of believing. We received life because we believe in our hearts in the resurrected Christ. And agreed to join him in death. And earlier, you know, in this letter, we looked at all of that, right, from Romans 10. It is with the heart that one believes, and it is with the mouth that one proclaims. And we have done this. If we, if we believe, then we have done this. God has gotten past our defenses. Sometimes we may have put up some others after we entered in but we couldn't believe if they were still there. Now early in his, in his letter to the church at, at Colossae, Paul spoke of this new position because, because apparently they were having trouble developing practice that, practices that were consistent with things above. They were focused on the things that they were, were delivered from, as we tend to do. We tend to do that instead of waiting on God to form new ways in us. Sometimes we digress to the ways that we already know. And then we, we want God to sanction those sometimes rather than waiting until God gives us some new practice and reveal to us the ways that are pleasing to Him, ways that will allow His will to manifest in our lives. Because even though the practices of heaven are simply defined in love, that is God, they're not, they not particularly easy. You know, the Church of Galatia attempted to develop practices based on the Jewish law and was admonished for doing so. They were in jeopardy of negating the work done in them by the Holy Spirit to establish a, a foundation based on God's grace. God did a lot of work to that church and then, and then they, uh, they digressed and Paul had some really strong things to say about the position that they now had. But the church of Colossae seems to have attempted to do a similar thing in using the means of the world around them to establish God's righteousness. So in the second chapter, Paul, you know, addressed, he addressed this in, in the second chapter and in the first. He's trying to, he's developing in this church, using the opportunity to develop a mindset, uh, to help them develop a mindset of who they now are in Christ. But you have to, he has to teach them about Jesus, of whose body they now are and the position of Christ, which position they now have. And so we can use, we can learn from this because we are in the same situation that they were in. And Colossians 2, 22, 20 through 23, here's what Paul wrote. He says, if you have died with Christ to the elementary principles of the world, 
Why, as if you were still living in the world, do you submit to rules and regulations such as do not handle this, do not taste that, do not even touch this? These things are all perished with use in accordance with the, with the commandments and teachings of men. These practices indeed have the appearance that particularly that popularly passes as that of wisdom in self-made religion and, and mock humility and severe treatment of the body, but are of no value against sinful indulgence because they do not honor God. So we have to be careful, right? Religious practices are not the same as uh, they, they, they don't necessarily demonstrate a, a, a converted mind or a converted heart or a transformed person. So Paul is addressing the relationship that believers in this church had developed with the principles based on teachings that form practices around things of this world. Practices developed from what we receive from heaven does not have its base on what we shouldn't do as much as what we have received. Practices uh, developed from what we receive from heaven uh, more is more, they're more developed around who God is, who Christ is, and who we are as, as, as members of the body of Christ who we are as children of God. Now even practicing the strict of, of rules, <clears throat> you know, as that of the, the Jewish law or some other set of rules, cannot take the place of what is practiced based on love. Rules of religion are either, they're either going to be too loose or too strict. Neither will give us the right mindset to follow Christ you know, to follow, to, to, so that Christ would be revealed in our bodies. And we looked last week at the things we are putting to death in our lives, right? Things that would prevent Jesus from, from being uh, manifested. Things would, put, that would prevent God from being the one that, the light of God from being what people experience of us as we walk in this world. Things resulting from what our practice in the world have produced in us. Things that rival the truth revealed from heaven. Truth that transforms us to the image of Christ seated at the right hand of God. We took a look at that we, we, um, and we tend to deep dive these things. And But then what are we being transformed into? What, does, it, what is it, does the truth from above produce in us? Consider chapter 3 of Colossians, verses 12 through 16. And we'll start with verse 12. So as God's own chosen people who are holy, <clears throat> set apart, sanctified for His purpose, and well-beloved by God Himself, Put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, which has the power to endure whatever injustice or unpleasantness comes with a good temper. I should read that again. So as God's own chosen people who are holy, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, which has the power to endure whatever injustice and unpleasantness comes with good temper. See, our actions should reveal that we are set apart as God's own chosen people. We are set apart from the world for the good works that we are called to do. Our practices should demonstrate this truth that we are well beloved by God. That God is in us and is revealed as Christ in us. This truth transforms us, amen? Allowing us to align with God in our hearts. Demonstrated by our compassion, our kindness, our humility, our gentleness, 
our patience. Where do we see those words before? Sounds like the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Except that God doesn't have to be humble. But our humility demonstrates that our recognition of the power of God that is manifested in these characteristics. These are not, you know, we have to really think about these words because they go us against the natural mindset. These words are not symbolic of, of greatness. They're not symbolic of strength. They're not symbolic of might. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. How do these transform into power and might? What they do. That's the question that should be answered in our life. These are the testimonies that we should have, is how these things transform into power and the demonstration of the power of God. How has God our Father demonstrated through these qualities to us, even, even to the world that does not recognize Him? We should have testimonies as this, of this as God <clears throat> reveals Himself to and reveals Himself through us in the good works that we do among people. God's response to the world who abandoned him in their hearts and minds is to send his son to die for whatever, whoever would believe. Me and you. This is the mindset that is in the believer as the foundation of the practices to be developed based on our position as children of God. We have to have this mindset. God's, God's position to God's response to the world. He didn't respond to the world as the world responded to him. He responded to the world with forgiveness. He responded to the world with mercy. He responded to the world with kindness. What about verse 13, Colossians 3? It says, bearing graciously with one another, and willingly forgiving each other if one has a cause for complaint against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so should you forgive. <clears throat> Isn't that great? The community of believers should demonstrate practices that resemble the truth about God's qualities. As Jesus did when he walked among us, and now walk among us again, in his body. Now notice that we don't just put up with one another. Amen? Our attitudes demonstrate our gratitude for our position in Christ. We are anxious to forgive each other, to demonstrate our gratitude. We want to demonstrate how grateful we are for God's forgiveness. And we do this by thankfully forgiving another of the wrong they have done us. And this is only the tip of the iceberg, right? Check out verse 14, which says, Beyond all these things, put on and wrap yourselves in unselfish love, which is the perfect bond of unity, for everything is bound together in agreement when each one seeks the best for others. Above these things, right? The Holy Spirit says beyond them, clothe yourself with love that is selfless. Love is the glue, the bond that holds together. Love is from the heart and from the heart of Jesus. We find our place in this love relationship when our lives are revealed from Jesus Christ. Seated at the right hand of God. Verse 15 says, Let the peace of God, the inner calm of one who walks daily with Him, be the controlling factor in your hearts, deciding and settling questions that arise. 
to this peace indeed you were called as members in one in, in one body and be thankful to God always the inner calm the inner calm that comes from our understanding of the truth of Jesus Christ Christ has all authority and this truth is to be demonstrated in our practices and it becomes what guides our heart. Think of this, we are called to this peace. All of us are called to this truth. The peace of God is not just to be acknowledged as to its existence, it is to be experienced. Matter of fact, not just not just experience it says let this peace be the controlling factor in our hearts deciding and settling questions everything would run through the peace of God if it's not experience then we should be we should seek more of Jesus we should set our minds more on things above. We should seek to know where we are lacking in our understanding of the will of God for our lives. Beloved, we should not just settle for behavior that does not demonstrate that we are grateful for our salvation. We're not called to a mind of turmoil, fear, anxiety. We are called to a life of peace. Peace that demonstrates our, our knowledge and understanding of who Christ is. Peace that demonstrates our knowledge and understanding of whose body we are. That we should always be thankful to God for His presence, for His deliverance as we practice what we receive from above. Verse 16, verse 16 reads, Let the spoken word of Christ have its home within you, dwelling in your heart and mind, permeating every aspect of your being, as you teach spiritual things and admonish and train one another with all wisdom. Check this out. Singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. We like to teach others. We like to show what we know. Show how much we know. But in the kingdom of God, the word of God is the foundation of all that is to be taught. The principles from the world is what guides our practices. As we look to guide each other, it should be with what we spoke of, you know, uh, 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 what, what, what we receive from above and the, 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 the practices that we have learned based on us. True wisdom, as we learned before, is from above and transform the person that is delivered, that it is delivered by way of. It transforms the individual that God uses to deliver. James 3, 13 through 18. Godly wisdom will transform the person through whom God chooses to give his message. That's why Jesus says you will know them by their fruit. Godly wisdom, you know, because godly wisdom emitted from us does not leave a person feeling like they have been, you know, torn apart when they are the, when they are the objects of it. It doesn't, it doesn't leave someone feeling that they have been they've been trashed, that they've been torn apart, no matter what the circumstance. This is not how God deals with us. We would not go to God if this is what we got from Him when we went. See, wisdom doesn't just teach, it addresses wrongs also. But with the state of our, our own souls in mind, Whatever we are addressing in someone else, we should always be thinking about ourselves 
and where things need to be addressed. This will give us a proper mindset towards how we, how we help others along. And we'll close with verse 17. Whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and in dependence on Him, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. We can't do for Christ without Christ, or it will be self-centered. Whatever is done for Christ is led by gratitude, gracious for being in the position to carry out God's will. Without gratitude, our actions will not make, will not, uh, make evident that what we are doing is directed by God. It will not be done in the right spirit. Songs that we, we, we sing to calm our souls should be with gratitude and consistent with the wisdom that comes from a, a transformed heart. It is for Christ that we live and what we do should demonstrate this. We have enough to do in our own lives to give God the, the opportunity to be experienced through us. We have enough enough going on in our lives that we have to bring captive to the obedience of Christ. Now let's, let's, let's help, help God help us by setting our minds on things above so that it can be evident that the peace of Christ richly dwell in our hearts. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. That is what more can we say? We thank you for the gift of salvation, the gift of love, for the gift of your spirit. And we pray for the courage, dear God, to walk in the spirit and not according to our old ways. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.